and welcome to another at-home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leafex Moore, keeping you up to date with everything Rocket League. We have a great, 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 great show for you guys today because we have an important grid watch, and you can probably tell because there's no banner behind me anymore. RLCS is finito, and we got your EU and NA Season X Championship highlights. Casio is featured in Double Tap, and of course, we got all the goodies from the community in the breakout. Before we start, I got a little bit of news to pass on to you guys. The Select Favorites item series has been added to the Blueprint pool. So whenever you receive a Blueprint, you have an opportunity to build some of the most popular items in the game. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and list all of them because there are a lot of them, but keep your eyes out for items such as the Painted Cristiano wheels, the Hellfire Goal Explosion, uh, the Fennec Car Body, that's good, and as I said, 16 other fan favorites. But moving on, if you missed any of the Season X European season, then we got you covered in Gridwatch. <laughs> The end of the Rocket League Championship Series historic 10th season is finally complete. With both Europe and North America concluding the regional championship finals this weekend, there's a lot to cover. It's evident to those who have been following the region that Europe Season X was less of a competition and more of a coronation. In the lead up to the championship, almost everyone thought they knew who would win. But if a miracle was going to happen anywhere, it was going to happen at the championship. Underdogs Team Queso had their first match against Solary, their fellow lowest seed who were determined to not be sent packing right away. Each team achieved a glorious 3-1 set in the first two series, bringing things down to one last best of five. And of course, the law of drama insisted that it had to go the full distance, all the way to game five, and a thrilling eight and a half minute long overtime which saw Queso clinch it at last. It's just so many chances that look like it's they're going to go in. And what? that's what? It's in. What? Astral that's manages it. to just leave the ball to fly over his head and on the side of Queso. Absolute eruption. So elated that this series finally ends after eight and a half minutes. In the upper bracket, Top Lokes was riding high, having just knocked down Guild in their premier match. Unfortunately for them, this meant that they would be up against Team Vitality in the semifinals. The European Season X's perennial runners-up who were determined to make it to the Grand Finals for one last shot at glory no matter what. Top Blokes put up a valiant defense, but ultimately went home in third, unable to pry Vitality from their silver throne. Top Blokes, one more chance with time running out. Flame tried the 50, Archie got the catch, but his teammates gone, Vitality! Down below, Team Queso did an admirable job at cleaning up Top Bloke's leftovers, defeating Guild in a 3-2 series that then gave way to an uncontested 3-0 sweep. But much like the Blokes, they were once again about to be gatekept from the Grands by the ones whom some have called the current best team in the entire world. Dementia with time, powers it forward. Is the mistake there? Oh. Up goes Atomic. It goes back down. That's not the, the bounce that Sailor needed. He's got to take that oh, ball the whole way. He couldn't do so. What? Team BDS. The Grand Finals featured a familiar matchup. Team Vitality, former RLCS World Champions, Season X's infamous juggernaut squad who won all three of the seasonal majors and most of the regional events to boot. These rivals had clashed more than half a dozen times over the course of the season and the time had come to decide things once and for all. But despite defending champion BDS's pedigree, it was Vitality who drew first blood. In an amazing first series, Vitality swept their eternal foes for nothing, using their incredible momentum to power through two consecutive overtimes and end End off with a dominant final game. Adolf looks to get it back over to Alpha. Will Monkey Moon be able to stop it? Wow. It doesn't even there matter if he had. GG. It's four to nothing. <laughs> BDS Unbelievable. have not been swept in a best of seven all season until wow. now. Team Vitality <laughs> put one hand on the trophy. They were on the verge of winning it all. Only the second series stood in their way. But this is when BDS finally woke up, taking the first two games and pushing a third into a tight overtime. It seemed like the ball was back in their court, but Vitality did not come this far just to lose, clinching the overtime and stealing inertia back. Two games later, and Vitality had done it. They'd toppled the behemoth and emerged victorious, where it counted most. After a season full of ups and downs and second place finishes, they were back on top, reclaiming their former glory as the champions of Europe. 
Monkey Moon doesn't quite control. Fairy Pig, it's just straight over to him. Extra, can't beat Kate up to it at all. It's wow. off the side. Fairy Pig wants wow. to kill off some more time from the clog. It's gonna be down oh, to wow. the floor and Team Vitality. North America's championship was no less exciting, featuring some real nail biters and all around excellent play as every team in the region brought their A game for Season X's last hurrah. Perhaps the most surprising upset of the tournament was Space Station Gaming overcoming Team Envy in the upper semifinals, denying Envy one last dance to cap off their season long rivalry with NRG. The first of their series was extremely close, as three out of seven games ended in overtime. It was a true seesaw match, advantage swinging back and forth with every game until SSG finally closed it out in the final and longest overtime round. The hunger from Envy, but the resilience from Space Station. The shot oh, is on target. Oh. Riddles will win it for Space Station. What a thriller in Series 1. Miss tries to get a touch out. Riddles hits the wing, and Sipical tries so hard to make sure Atomic doesn't get to that ball. Space Station Gaming. Envy seemed to fall apart a bit after that, securing only one win in the second series as SSG took game after game until it was all over. An impressive victory for SSG who have been up and down from top to middle throughout Season X, but a crushing defeat for Envy, a team who had hoped to close out the season by asserting their skill. Atomic will have to keep this airborne. He does turbo with just a pad. Riddles, now back to Mist. The season coming down to this moment for Envy. It's too far, and Space Station will win it! Of course, even if they had made it to the Grand Finals, there is no guarantee they would have attained their desired match with NRG, as NRG came within a hair's breadth of being eliminated themselves in their respective semifinal match. Their opponents, G2 Esports, who had scrapped their way to the semifinals from the lowest seeding, taking out contenders FaZe Clan and Rogue along the way. NRG wasn't in the best state heading into the semifinals, having temporarily lost their coach thanks to a code of conduct violation. Perhaps it was this, in conjunction with G2's determination and momentum that led to the longest match of the championship thus far. While the first overtime saturated series went to NRG, their victory was extremely slight, with G2 putting up one hell of a fight. The ferocity ended up winning them the second series as well, by a larger margin than NRG took the first too. You know, be able to pop that ball off back into the middle and create that space again that G2 has had so much trouble defending, but as it stands, I mean, Chicago and Drees played a, a Drees played a beautiful offensive game here. Chicago, a beautiful defensive game. G2 well defended and well deserved. NRG regained control of the third and final series and ended up closing it out with two consecutive overtime wins. And so the big finale came down to Space Station Gaming versus NRG. But unlike in Europe's grands, this time it was indeed the region's top ranked team who won the day. NRG squashing SSG in just two series, despite Space Station's best efforts to force overtimes in three out of five of the second series games. NRG have yet again asserted themselves as the best of the West. These final seconds of formality. NRG, Space Station, you knew it would be a battle. And there you have it. The marathon of RLCSX is over. With these two championships finished, Season X comes to a close. Forced onto the internet due to a pandemic, Rocket League Esports has managed to continue to thrive. What is yet to come for the RLCS is now up to anyone's imagination. The absolute pinnacle of Rocket League play. Honestly, it <laughs> it's hard to, to think now that Season X is over for the longest time we were doing two seasons of Rocket League, of league play every single year. You know, we had season one and two crammed into like half a year and the rest were a bit more spread out, but it still felt like we got up to the season 10 real quick. I mean, it was in the matter of five years and all of a sudden we, we split off to this year long format, match after match, after game, after game, after series, after series, and it, it just didn't stop. And it's incredible that we could all gather around and celebrate Rocket League in such a spectacular moment and to see it all come to the end is a little bittersweet i know there's a lot more good rocket league uh action to come uh, in the future but with that being said let's check out some of the best plays from the eu and na championships in hot shots Hi. 
handle. Connect with Chicago. Oh, near Chicago. the ceiling. Chicago looking for the double tap, and it's past Justin. Chicago's just got to get it to Dries. There's one player in the way. They're Chase causing it chaos, and he'll just take oh, the shot. Oh, no, get oh, 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 Get rid of the ball. They would consider that as big of a winner scoring. Off the oh, oh, my what? goodness. Oh, no. oh, oh. It goes so quickly. Oh, the boost is in favor of oh, Team Vitality. You can see BDM wow. were rushing back. No boost on the rotation. Vitality kept this ball in the half of BDS. Base station still on the attack. Oh, 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 oh. Forget the ball. Go for the man. Let your teammate clean it up. Link loses possession. Gosh. And NRG will take over. Justin just reading this game immaculately. <laughs> He's going to stall it out in the midfield for Garrett G to come through and do this to him. To find his teammate across the net as well. Finding the chance for a Tom A. He's got it. Like, win the double tap, Team Queso. In the midfield. This one will be J Naps. Has a lot of control. Does get that flip in. Oh my double gosh. Oh. Oh. A little bit more here in this Ooh. game. Here comes first killer oh. again. Looking for a second oh. time. First killer all the way. Oh. Oh. Highlight play for him. Alpha couldn't quite hook himself around to try and find the shot still. Looks to try and set up a teammate. It's going to be a oh. But Alpha oh. will oh. Oh. You know, I'll never get tired of watching professional Rocket League plays, but we have to move on from the fine to the fun in the breakout. First up is Tom Incognito that finds sometimes Rocket League is more akin to a waltz. This was less a dance than it was stepping on each other's toes, I think. It, Roma, I'm pretty sure I've seen a compilation of people falling to that song before. And that's more apt to what I just saw there. Next up though, YN Aaron scored the best goal of his RL career. I'm going to be real, I've heard from multiple people, including pros, that the best goal they have ever scored is on their own net. So don't feel too bad, just maybe do some Photoshop and see if you can change the color of your car, maybe. Moving on though, Rusty, ooh, will do anything for a pass. I 
this, that is the, uh, everything I tell people, work on your recoveries. You just hold down your drift, literally just hold down your drift button while you're playing. And, th and that's what happens. Work on your recoveries by holding your drift button. And that's what happens. Beautiful, pristine. I thought this was breakout, not hot shots. That was clean. But our next one here comes from Rice Booty Treats. Nice. Who really works well with his teammate. I gotta say, th th honestly, that's probably way harder than scoring a normal goal. Granted, there was, might have been a little bit of luck involved, but quality breakout post, I must say. Finally, D Tom Rock brings us this week's version of That's So Calculated. Hey, at the end of the day, you only have yourself to blame and you missed an open net. Of course, you're going to get punished. Hit your darn shots. We're going to move on, though, because up next, Double Tap is taking a look at Casio's RL journey. We've covered a couple of fantastic Frenchmen in the last few weeks on Double Tap, and the Gallic Parade continues now with the Incroyable Casio, a remarkably consistent player who's been on the rise as of RLCS Season X. When I see a video of Rocket League, I knew I was wanting to play the game at the highest level possible. And so I start training, mostly playing every day. So with school, sometimes it's a bit hard, and but yeah, you need to play a lot and think about what you can do better and find the good people as well. Casio got his start on the Rocket League competitive circuit, competing in ESL Gaming's French League circa 2017, where he competed in the group stage with the team Red World Gaming. Soon after, he would form his own squad, Triple Trouble, alongside teammates Ronick, Ian, and Andum. He wouldn't play with them very long, however, departing the team he helped build the following February due to the belief that he was holding them back from competing in big tournaments. Half a year of grinding later, Casio would join up with Method, the RLCS Season 4 runners-up, to take on a fourth season of a new competition, Gfinity's Challenger Series. He would go on to become their star player, scoring the most points of any player in the season and eventually helping boost the team to victory in the Elite Series Finals. That same year, Method also competed in the Rocket League Rival Series, finishing third place and narrowly missing their shot at a promotion to the RLCS. That'll be given up to Frizz. One more touch needed. It's not there. And the final countdown here. Copenhagen Flames setting out to play spoiler this week. They will not do so to Method. Method comes out and takes care of business, and now it's out of their hands. They watch to see what Copenhagen does later. They watch to see what the Clappers do later as they score one more for the road, and Casio adds one more hat trick on the season. A few months later, almost a year to the day he departed Triple Trouble, Casio rejoined the team. Armed with knowledge, experience, and determination, he was now ready to take on the world. And he would do just that, as Triple Trouble placed highly enough in RLCS Season 7's European Regional that they moved on to Worlds. It was Casio's first time at the World Championship, and he certainly made the most of it. Triple Trouble secured themselves a spot in the playoffs with their group stage performance, which even featured an impressive last second win in a game against reigning champions Cloud9. Touch it by one, but the shot coming in, Gimmick with no boost, forced to make that save, gonna follow it up, picked up one small pad, it wasn't enough, Torment clearing this ball to the corner, Squishy, off the corner again, Ronicky across the field, Gimmick, shut down by Casio, Tadpole up, oh, there Casio's is. there, the shot beats out the final Cloud9 defender, triple trouble in overtime, take the win. And they just couldn't find that touch in the midfield, Torment was caught a little bit too far forward, let it go over his head, great vision. Miles an hour, blistering shot from Casio, and great vision on that pass up field, and a well-deserved win in game number one for Triple Trouble. Sadly, that was as far as they'd go in season seven, and Triple Trouble would disband only a month later. For season eight, Casio competed with Veloce Esports, and actually performed performed better than the previous year, finishing third in Europe before once again making it to the playoffs at LAN. Back down, Sticky puts it away. Casio could win the game, but Kami has him blocked. 
And now back in front of the box, towards Santos. What? Santos. Wow! Wow! You're kidding! Absolute tragedy for Renegades! Torsos taking his time. He knew he had all the time in the world to get up to it. And his teammate panics and just smashes it into their own goal. Tragedy is the perfect word to describe <laughs> that. You have got to be kidding me! That's how that ended? In a stroke of irony, the very French Casio's next big move would be to form the very British team Top Lokes with the similarly British Archie and Flame, the latter of which was a multi-season rival series champion. In a season dominated by Mega Titans Team BDS, Top Lokes still managed to put on a jolly good show, ending the season ranked third in Europe, just behind the legendary Team Vitality. Top Lokes have the unique distinction of being one of the very few teams who managed to defeat BDS multiple times in Season X, even riding their momentum all the way to a regional win in the winter split. Kester, though, now can go up, opts not to, it's his atomic is in front of the ball for him. Archie shot just wide, Dementia sends it long and floating, oh! and that's Cassio, the man of the tournament so far, the Frenchman wins winter regional number two for top blokes. All that work and one read from Cassio is enough to sink the fight of Team Queso, but what a fight it was. Top blokes may have a fairly new roster, but their legacy is already off to an excellent start. And one of the secret keys to their success is undoubtedly the perseverance and skill of the one and only Casio. You know what, I think it's real cool that we're doing these dives into some of these players that aren't the legends. A player like Casio can sometimes go underlooked uh, and teams like top blokes because they're not Vitality, they're not BDS, they're not NRG. But that's not fair to them, because these players are still phenomenal. I've been matched up a couple times here and there against some of these pros uh, in ranked or something. And you're like, okay, I can do this. You very quickly realize that no, you absolutely cannot, even against the lowest of the RLCS placing teams. It is, uh, I think it's real cool that we can, we can showcase how good and how much work a lot of these players put into it. And how much even us analysts sometimes underestimate them, given what happened to the top blokes during the RLCS championship. So I think that's a perfect example right there. But that is all the time that we have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, you can check out more of our content on YouTube and on Twitter at Squad State. Thank you guys so much for watching again. And for a little overtime action, here is your weekly backfire. Bing.